Could you live alone for 30 years? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Everybody needs a little time away. I heard a say from each other. It's true. It's not just a very catchy Chicago so, song, that was so nice. which I am downloading immediately after that, and it's going to be in your brain if you know the song the rest of the day. You're welcome. If not, you should look into it. It's a great song, but it's wise. Wow. Everybody does need a little alone time. Yeah. I mean, we just spent uh, a few weeks vacationing apart. Apart. And now our relationship is healthier because of it. You think so? Our relationship with Mythical Beast is healthier because of the hiatus. I believe it. I believe it. But there's some people, as mm. it turns out, who need a little bit more than a little time away. They need decades maybe, away. Maybe 30 years. I'm talking about hermits, y'all. Okay, we've got some insane hermit stories for you today, and we have a special little surprise packed into the middle of that hermit sandwich. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> but let me start by telling you about Christopher Thomas Knight, a.k.a. the North Pond Hermit. Why don't you tell me about Christopher Knight? Are you going to do Chicago I'm the whole sure time? I'm sure it will be all right. Now, I say that in a really sensational voice, but it's actually kind of a boring story when you think about it because- Bore me! When he was 20 years old in 1986, right after Chernobyl happened, he went off into the woods in Maine, in central Maine. Not because of Chernobyl, he just uses Chernobyl as a way of remembering when it was. Okay. He has no reason why he went away. He just went. Hey, And he, he stayed there for hermits 20, need not reasons. 27 years! He didn't tell his family where he was going, he made no contact with anybody the entire time except one hiker who happened to go by his campsite and apparently he said, hi. That's it. 27 said, years 27 he says years, hi. Hi. That's it for 27 years. Now, before 1986, this guy had never been camping, ever. This is like your first tattoo being full body leopard spots. <laughs> he, he, full headlong right into this experience. It, by the way, I'm sure that's been done too, but we should save that okay. for another episode. He never lit a fire for fear of being found. He never went away from the camp except during the nighttime. Dude, we went camping that one time, and it wasn't the first time we ever been camping, and they wouldn't let us start a fire, and we were immediately like, well, we should just leave. Yeah, he's like, 27 years I can do that. If no, you've no campfire, the best part of camping, he didn't even get that. But how did he live? Poor if he doesn't guy. have a fire, if he's not doing anything except saying hi to one person in 30 years. <laughs> He stole stuff, a uh, lot of stuff. Oh, really? 40 robberies a year, over a thousand robberies over the years that he was out there. He oh, would wow. go to homes, schools, summer camps, and he would get all his supplies, including his underoos. He would steal- Dude, would steal underwear? Yeah, probably dirty ones, just off of the floor. That's why you should always, never put your dirty underwear on the floor. You always put it in the hamper, because a crazy hermit might come and be like, oh, free underoos. Scoop it up, oh, oh, pull oh, it oh, on. Oh, 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 don't do that. He also stole- I picture him wearing the underwear outside of his clothes. Yeah, like, I'm sure that's what he did. That's, all hermits do that. It's called the exo underwear skeleton. <laughs> no, it's not. Mm, no, it's not. Uh, no, he it's even not. stole a 10 year old's Halloween candy stash. <laughs> I don't know how they knew that he did that. This dude has no moral compass. It was not a video for a Jimmy Kimmel thing. It was actually just a legitimate, he just stole the candy from Did he have an actual compass? Um, Okay, okay, but he obviously wasn't out there forever. He was caught, what did he do? Well, there was a guy, a game warden named Terry Hughes who made it his life mission to catch the North Pond Hermit. And so what he did- Sounds like a movie. Like, he would be played by like, who, the guy from Avatar who looks like this. Yeah, the general. Hey man, he I've been hunting for you for 27 he years. He set up a camera at Pine Tree Summer Camp because uh, Christopher had been known to go in there and steal things and he put a motion sensor behind the ice machine because I figure after a while this hermit's gonna need some ice. I put underwears all over the floor. I lured them in with dirty underwear right to the ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> so then, and sure it worked. Enough, on April 3rd, 2013 at 1 a.m., the silent alarm uh, goes off and he goes up there and he finds the North Pond Hermit in the kitchen, snooping around. He has a gun, not the per hermit, but the general, and he put, holds him at gunpoint until the authorities show up. They end up catching the dude, he arresting him. He's the general. <laughs> and, he's, not the, he's not a general. Uh, only seven months in prison. Seven months in prison, which he said did more damage to him than the 30 years that he spent in the wilderness. And now he's out and he's on probation. And I'm assuming that one of the conditions of probation is no camping. Right. And 
underwear on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, did the judge. <laughs> I hope the judge didn't wink, wink. Mm -mm. <laughs> he didn't. All right, I have another super sensational hermit story, but first, it's time to get to the, the meat in the hermit sandwich. A little work, new surprise that we worked up. <laughs> it's time for, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Okay, here's how it works. One of us, and it's gonna be you because we're going alphabetical. Yes. Has to do something that is the best and the worst, good and bad, at, at the, the same, same time, time and then make a decision if you'd ever do it again. Okay. Link, pick a card, any card. Right, I'm gonna pick this card, <laughs> this one card. Get a massage while being fed sardines. Okay. All right, we got this new spot to do stuff like this. Whoa, look, you, <laughs> you, you took your shirt and your glasses off. Well, I'm getting a massage. Okay, uh, let's bring in the masseuse. <laughs> Chase is the masseuse. Chase is the masseuse. What do you think we're gonna get an actual masseuse? Like a Swedish masseuse. I will be uh, feeding Link the sardines. Link, again, this is- a, the... a, a massage from Chase is not under the best category. No, 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 Chase is good at a lot of things. He owns a chinchilla. Period. <laughs> okay, listen. Uh, I'm gonna be feeding you these whole sardines while you get this some wonderful massage. Now, I'm thinking the massage is the good part and the sardines are the bad part. The best <laughs> of times are the worst of times and you're gonna tell us whether or not you'd ever do this again, okay? You can start the massage whenever you want to, masseuse Chase. <laughs> Something just dripped, was that off of you, He's got lotion, Chase? he dripped some lotion on me. <laughs> you kidding me? No, he's, oh, I mean, he's not a professional, he just owns a chinchilla. Oh, 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 bite it. I'll bite it. Man, it's just so awkward that like Chase works for me, but not as no, a masseuse. Think of think of him just like think of, you, you're at a, a resort. You just with a resort. And, no, you're at the mall. You're at the mall, and one of those guys stopped you and said, "Don't hold back, Chase. I need this." Okay, I don't want to eat anybody. <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, you just come on now. I don't want to use my hands because I gotta be the map. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is awkward. Absolutely. I don't want to eat any more of this. That's part I, of the experience. I don't though. want any more. Okay. I got some, ooh. He's really, wor oh, he's really oh, working oh, the God. elbows now. Oh, oh gosh, a little higher. <laughs> oh, okay, oh there you go. Okay, oh. Link, have you gathered enough uh, information about this experience to, uh, oh, to, gauge, God. <laughs> to gauge whether or not you would do it again? Mm, yeah, I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been It Was the Best of Times, It Was the Worst of Times. All right. Oh, man. How you feel? Good, I've been chipmunking this stuff, though. I'm, <laughs> I still have to get it down. Oh, we'll just proceed. Oh, gosh. <laughs> There's some noises being mm. made. Very oily. My back. Oh. And the sardines, like I said. All right, got another hermit story for you. And really great breath for this for this part. Oh wow, um, it's like a cat got out of a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> and crawled into my mouth. Um, 1974, during the Vietnam War, uh, Ho Van Tan, um, his home, this is kind of sad to start off with, his home was destroyed by a bomb that also killed his wife, and two of his sons. This is during the Vietnam War. Well, he immediately just grabs his other son and runs into the jungle. He's out of Dodge. Yeah, which totally makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily a hermit, except that he stayed there for 40 years. In the woods. 40 years in the woods without contact with anyone except the son. Now, he was 42 years old when he went in, so his son, who was two at the time, grew up to be a 42 year old in complete isolation, living, they were even isolated from the ground for the most part. He built a-, a they, fl they were flying? No, he couldn't fly. He built a tree house 16 foot off the ground. They fashioned loin cloths out of tree bark and- They went um, all in, they went all in. He, he had pants, but he folded his pants up neatly in the corner of the tree house and they stayed there for 40 years. Uh, he used bomb shrapnel to make knives and axes, and he cultivated tobacco, and like he and his son uh, smoked tobacco and just lived out there um, for Could 40 be worse. For 40 years um, until locals, I say locals, but they were kind of venturing out farther to get firewood. They come back with a report of two jungle men living out we there. We found some jungle men. Of course, it's, it's uh, Ho Van Tan and his son 
living in their treehouse. And they sent the authorities out there. The authorities bring him in, and it turns out that he spoke a few words, but he, he kind of his communication was had broken down severely. The dad. the dad, but the son didn't didn't know anything except for like just a couple of words. Over the course of their forty year isolation, they stopped speaking even to each other. This is so the, it was a like sad at this point. They like no, but they they were they were thriving out there. But they were communicating. Smoking cigarettes. They were, they were communicating. With, <laughs> with, yes, <laughs> with hand signals. Oh. They communicated, and so that's how they would communicate when they were brought back into civilization. Uh, they were given nineteen hundred dollars to build a house, which they built. Oh, you can they build got quite a house for that. Well, they 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 built a nice house. Here's a picture of him sweeping his the sun sweeping out in front of it. And are they are they now that they're speaking to each other? Um, it's starting to speak a little bit more, and the son is learning to listen to music on his cellular telephone. That is a tough thing to learn how to do. <laughs> 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 you know. Let but, me show you. How, let me teach you how to do this, sir. But I can totally relate. When I worked for my dad for a summer, he he whisked me away and we built a treehouse. No, <laughs> we would like lay tile and paint houses. But my dad got into Pretty this the rhythm of not speaking to me. He would grunt and use hand signals, and it was extremely frustrating. But and then I found that like sometimes I'll do that with the kids. You do that with me. Yeah, it's all like, the time. If I want you to pick up some of the hey, dishes, I'm about, I don't. I don't grunt like a caveman, but I'm just. I'm not like. Just you sound like the, just the, the, the Swiss the, chef. And then the, so it, yeah. So I I believe that this would be my life if I went to a treehouse. I would come back doing hand well, signals with one sign. You ought to take Lando to the woods and see how it turns out. <laughs> and when he comes back, I'll teach him how to listen to music on a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they're they're, uh, they're adapting back into society, and good for them. The jungle men coming back, coming back in strong. Man. Are you a hermit uh, that watches Good Mythical Morning? <laughs> if so, uh, leave a hand signal down below, <laughs> please. Yes. Thanks for hand signaling and liking this video. You, well, it is a, it is a hand yeah, signal. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is? I'm Riley. I'm Aubrey. It's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. We're on Snapchat. Our account is called Real Rhett Link. Real Rhett Link. It's real. We're Rhett and Link. Snapchat. Follow Do that. It. Click through to Good Mythical More. Rhett's got an amazing story of an amazing encounter while being a hermit on vacation. I got a vacation story too. Soccer moms. Hey, Lorene. Hey, Joanne. Did you hear about Marlene? Marlene? She got a new minivan. It minivan. holds 14. People, well, that, 16 babies. That's a maxi van. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's got a built-in cracker machine, too. It builds crackers? Now, it makes goldfish crackers. You press a button and every little toddler gets a cr goldfish I, cracker. I've heard that it's got a cannon in it, too. A cannon it shoots, shoots what? T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, it's got a T-shirt cannon in it, too. I heard about she that. She goes to NBA basketball games and shoots them from center court. That doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about that. I thought that's where they shot T-shirts. Mm. Arena football? Well, but you know what? She's such a gossip. She is. Yeah, I, she I hate her. She cannot <laughs> shut her mouth. And then when we were done, there was like, he wasn't crying, but there was like, he was moved. He cried one cashew. <laughs> <laughs>